Hey everyone, this is Todd. This is a new Gen 5 system right here that I'm shipping out today. So that's what you're gonna receive. And I'm gonna go through and pull all that out and show you what you get inside. Then I'm gonna run through setup real quick. And I've got a hose reel setup that I'll go through in detail here at the end of the uh, video. All right, so let's get rocking. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so when you receive your system, uh, first thing you're going, going to want to deal with is the pressure washer and the hose reel. We want to get those positioned against your wall. Uh, Depending on your stud placement, usually my customers either have them on the back wall or uh, I like mine by the garage because I can pull the line straight out. It's really simple. It wasn't practical for me to put it on the back end of my garage, uh, this one anyway, uh, and pull it out this way. That's ideal also. This works for me, but depending on where your placement is, um, you, you want to make sure that you can place this. The systems are designed to have the treatment system right beside, just to the left if you're looking at it, of the pressure washer and the hose reel. And then upgrade from that. So I've got I'll be sloped floors. You want your expansion tank on the upper side of the treatment system um, always, so you don't accidentally overfill the tank. Uh, so let's go through this. So this is your pressure washer. Uh, I just put it back in the same box. But your wand. So it's already got a quick disconnect fitting on it. That's ready to go. Uh, so I, you've got a foam cannon. And then of course the pressure washer. And on your, this section of the pressure washer wand, again, I'm gonna take this up and ship it here in, in, as soon as I get done with this video. But I, I put, this is a uh, 2.0 orifice 15 degree nozzle that, that I prefer. It doesn't come with uh, the stock units, well, and nothing here you can just go buy off the shelf but so that's that's what you can expect with that all right now let's run through the hose reel super quick all right so this is going to be your hose reel actually you know what i would do this okay so on your hose reel, instruction manual, super simple to follow. Um, these, this is all the hardware you're gonna need. And this is, uh, this is a custom part that I build for these. And you got your hose reel. And wrapped around the hose reel is so this right here is your hose that will actually run through the bar okay um, through this way anyway it's on the instruction just put that on here's your mounting plate it comes with four lag bolts And the first thing that you want to do, once you've figured out placement of that, set your pressure washer next to it, get your line hooked into this. So this guy right here, okay. What I'm doing You can see there's there's my fitting that goes to the back of the pressure washer. Well, actually it's front, but it, the way it sits, it's back. And I want to make sure when I put this up 
the hose reel, I, I like mine as tall as I can get it. So, and that you've got a finite amount of tubing here. So just get your height where you need it, place a mark on your wall, and I'll show you how to mount that here a little bit later in the video. This is a Gen 5 Pro, so it's got an expansion tank with it. Um, it on the Pro, you're gonna get this box. It's got both your bases for the tanks, and inside of that is your high pressure hose for the reels. So it's very simple. Um, this goes to the reel. I'll show you that here a little bit later in the video, and this goes to the pressure washer one. Um, not a big deal. Real quick and easy. So, now when you're unpacking your barrels, uh, if you have a single tank system, the interconnect to go from the tank to the pressure washer is going to be inside of the primary box. So this is this is the G5 Pro treatment system. And they're, they're all the same. Setup on all of them is the same. This is what you're gonna get. So you've got your tool for your pieces inside. I'll show you what it looks like inside. And then right down here on this side of the box, There's your polished cartridge, and we put that in later. I'll go through that here in a minute. Okay? But the easiest way to get these out, pull your polished cartridge out, and just find the flat back of the tank, turn it around, lay it down on the floor, and pull it out. That's, that's the easiest way to get these things out of, out of the box. And again, if you've got one of the uh, basic or single tape models, your interconnect's going to be in here. On the professional models, or if you upgrade to an expansion tank, the interconnect is in with the expansion tank. Okay? Oh, she's so pretty. So pretty. So uh, this is your interconnect, and I'll show you how this works. It's got that and this piece. So this is your this is your bucket fill, and it's extremely simple. It's just a quick disconnect, okay? But it's a swivel to fill your wash bucket, okay? And it's the same thing with your expansion tank. When you're taking it out of the barrel, or the box, I'm sorry. When you take it out of the box, just, just lay it flat on the ground and pull it out. That's the easiest way to do this. All right. Okay. This is my system here. And this is my uh, traveling show system right there. And I'm going to kind of go through that with you a little bit. First thing we've done is placed the pressure washer, figure out where we want the, the, the hose reel, and this is, just, this is just to show you, it's got a flat plate to mount your hose reel on your wall. What I did was just a 2x6 on mine. So all I did, um, my garage actually wasn't 16 on center, which is very unusual. Just about all of them are. So I just did a two by six. I lag bolted it to the wall to my studs so that I could place my hose reel anywhere that I wanted it. Uh, I've got four lag bolts here that go into the two by six. Um, lag bolts are provided if you don't buy this mounting system. So I. I'll talk about this here in a second, but I offer this. It's a 16 on center mounting system. I'll go through that in more detail here in a minute. So we've got this place. Next thing I'm going to do is set my bases down. 
and put my treatment system on, the expansion tank on, and before I start filling these, I want to get my interconnect on there, okay? So it, it's very simple. And the only reason I want to do that is because you kind of got to, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll have to uh, just reposition your barrels usually to get them exact center. It's not, it's not a huge deal. Just like that. But obviously when they're full, they're a little bit hard to move. So I've got those connected. Um, and this, of course, is your feed to your pressure washer. So you just suck up the pressure washer and you're good to go. Now, there's only two lines that we need to be concerned about with this system. Got an incoming, obviously, and an outgoing. Both of them are marked with instructions on what to do, but this is just a standard garden hose thread. You can hook it up anywhere. Um, I put a garden hose outlet. I, I just tapped into my fresh water line in my garage and put, uh, got, I think it was two fittings. Yeah, two fittings. I put in a valve and, and that, that has a garden hose thread on it. You can put this on anything outdoors. And then this is your reject water for your RO. That's the second stage of the treatment process. And it's really no different, matter of fact, there it is right there. This is the RO membrane. It's no different than the one you have under your sink for drinking water, except I'm not pulling any organics. Um, the only thing you would have to do to make this identical to the drinking water is replace the third stage treatment process with a carbon 10 inch filter and you've got uh, some, some good stuff to drink anywhere, anywhere you are. Uh, anyway, the treatment process is all inside the tank. And what we want to do is get this hooked up. Make sure on your reject line, we want to route that. You can route that out outdoors and throw it on your lawn. Uh, what I did is just put it to a vent tube uh, for my water heater and, and furnace. Um, just plumbed it in my garage with quarter inch line. It was really simple. But you want to make sure this valve is wide open when you first fire this thing up. So, once you get the water on, just start supplying pressure to it. Just turn it, turn on your line. And this is your TDS meter right here. Okay, it's got instructions on it on how, how to do it. Uh, they all have new batteries when they, they, they leave my shop, so um, they're active. But what this is doing is reading what's going into the polish treatment stage and what's coming out of it into the barrel. This is actually your barrel probe. So it's just free, free floating inside the tank and measuring your water quality inside. Now, the water's gonna come out this float valve and if you, if you wanna test what's actually coming out of this and not intermix with whatever's in your tank, uh, just pull a sample out of that, grab this, drop your probe in that and, and that'll tell you this has an in and out switch on it, so you just switch it to your out, figure out what you're to, to read from that probe, and check your water. It's that simple. Um, so what we're trying to do before we install the polish cartridge um, is get this, we need to condition the RO membrane. And I want, we want what's coming out of this to be at least below 10 parts per million preferably be below, below six. So I'm gonna want this valve wide open until I reach that. Um, most systems, what'll happen is you'll get down into the two or three and have a lot of reject water. That's what this valve is for, but until we get it conditioned and stabilized, uh, we don't wanna mess with this valve. We want it wide open. And real quick, if you ever shut this thing completely, you'll destroy uh, the treatment system in this thing. So you don't have, you just, just got to be careful not to close it all the way. It's not a big deal. Pretty simple. Um, 
I got mine set at four parts per million and I haven't had to touch it for four years, I think. Um, I've, been, I've been selling the Gen 5s for about three years, so, um, and, and mine, of course, was the first one. It works fantastic, um, and I have absolutely no problem. So, once we're down to about, uh, be below 10, six parts per million or so, and you're, you're, you're probably going to be a little less than a quarter of tank when you get there, and that's good, that's okay. Um, then we're going to throw in the polished cartridge, okay? And all you do, as you can see, here's our three-stage process. We've got a particulate matter filter, that's the clear housing. Uh, goes through the RO membrane, we're going to have some discharge on that. And the, 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 the white canister is your polish treatment system. And that's where we're going to put in the polish cartridge. So. All you do is just take your fancy dancy tool that's included, and this will do your 10 inch filters, also does the RO uh, membrane if you need to mess with that. Typically they'll go two cycles, um, uh, sometimes three or four, but you, you typically you'll get at least two cycles out of the particulate matter filter and the RO membrane. Um, Two, by two cycles, I mean you're going to get 1,850 to 2,500 gallons out of your polished cartridge. Uh, when it's spent, uh, just order a polished cartridge from me um, and put it in. The RO should be fine. Um, typically, the second time around, um, I recommend everybody get a full recharge kit. But So this, this is a polished cartridge. You want to be a little bit careful. It's, it's a double O-ring unit, and this O-ring will fall out. So just pull it straight out, no big deal. Take, take the water that's in it, dump it in, in your barrel or whatever you want to do. Put your polished cartridge in, very simple, and put this back on. And let it go. Um, that's it. It's fully automatic. Now, if you're not using... Each, each tank is 45 gallon working capacity, so you've got 90 gallons. If you have a, it, it, this customer will have 90 gallons. Obviously, I do too. I can wash I can wash my coach a, a 30 foot trailer and a couple of cars with that water, that much water, with my new system. So I I custom build these and I sell these. Uh, if you don't want to do the go the two by six route. It, if this is better for you, there are several scenarios where this is way better. Uh, what I've done is I've got this is really, really heavy duty stuff. Hey, I want this. So I want this to be 52 inches uh, from the floor. Uh, probably hard to read on the camera. The mounting plate, the bolts, this is exactly how you're going to get it. It's already preset in the middle of the bar with two set pins here. And you, it's got two extra set pins. So once I get this mounted on the wall, and you want to make sure these are your uh, securing uh, bolts. It's just a quarter inch hex, hex bolt. They're already set uh, when you receive the package. But if need be, you can loosen these and reposition this bar, then tighten them back up. But if your hose reel, if this ends up, on your joist and your hose reel needs to be kind of, I hope you can see this, over here to this side. This is movable. All you have to do is just punch these through, put it where you want it, eighth inch drill bit, just re-drill through this plate into this bar and just tap these in. And then take your hose reel and use these bolts and bolt that down. And you want, you want to torque these down uh, on that plate because uh, the hose, the pressure, the high pressure hose that I use is some, some serious army grade stuff. It's just absolutely bulletproof. Um, okay. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say, so if you're not going to use all this, uh, the water, I don't, I mean, I'll, I'll fill up my tanks. It takes 12 hours for, it's a hundred gallons a day. 
So in, in just under 24 hours, about 24 hours, you'll fill both tanks. Sometimes these will last me one or two weeks. So I just turn off my water feed so that I don't have reject water going out unnecessarily. Um, and I'll use them and, and when they get halfway down, I'll flip it on and I just, 12 hours later, I'll come out and turn it off or uh, if I've emptied them all the way, I just turn it on and next time I'm in the garage, 24 hours later, I just flip off the water. It's not a big deal if you don't. So on your hose reel, your high pressure hose, all you do, easiest way to string this thing up is so your high pressure hose reel you'll have to bolt your handle on uh, this is run through the tube runs through your your um, bar very simple uh, you run it through this way you're going to have to put on the elbow fitting use plenty of teflon tape um, once you get that position Bring your hose through, and as you can see right here, there's a, a, a holder clamp. Just run the hose through it and connect it right here. And the easiest way to do it is to lay the hose out and then reel it up. If you try to just pull it out and reel it up, it start, it's just a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> just, just string it out. It's a lot easier that way. We run a tank through this thing, and our part per million is below six. What do we do? That's why we have this back pressure valve. So what I'm going to do, if I'm below six parts per million, I'm going to shut this thing all the way off for a split second, and then I'm going to order, open it up about 20, 25% maybe, a little bit less. And I'm going to run another tank and check what my input is. The more you close this, the more you're trying to force through the membrane. And if I were to close it all the way, it would force all of the bad stuff through the membrane and destroy it, along with the polish treatment uh, cartridge. But 99% of the time, you're gonna be putting out way too much reject water, but we need, we need to do that. We need to get the part per million down before we put in the polish. And there's also a preservative on the membrane that we wanna get off there before we put polish in. But don't worry about that. If you get down to below 10 parts per million, you already accomplished that task. So we're okay. So after, you, after you've run a barrel or so, start dialing this in and let it, let it run a barrel before you check it and adjust it again. Um, but it might take a couple, couple times and you'll get it dialed in. And like I said, I set mine years ago and I haven't had to touch it. And by golly, ah, the only last thing I wanted to tell you, these are the batteries for the TDS meter. Uh, this thing, it's, it's Velcro in. it's extremely easy. All, all you do is just take out three screws and they're right there to replace them. Um, the lids, when you get your tank, the lids are screwed down and that's for outside applications. Uh, most of us put our systems inside, so especially if we're in uh, uh, you know, areas with cold winters, um, and th th these aren't necessary. Uh, I just take them out. You don't even need to put them back in. However, uh, if you do, I, I don't know. I, I just keep mine inside my TDS box in case I ever need to use them. Your shop's really dirty. I've got a lot. I've got auto body shops where I recommend they do. A lot of them don't, and we haven't had any problems. So, not a big deal. Um, that's about it. And you got you guys know that uh, um, I'm always available. I, I live and breathe this stuff. This is so cool. Um, I have a really, really good product. I have a really good product. You're going to love it. So anyway, hope everybody has a great day. Thank you for your time. Call me with any questions, uh, even silly ones. I love helping people. So uh, got to get this packaged up and shipped. Have a good one. Taught out.